Today we're going to talk about how to best understand and how to best use your home inspection report that is a product of a Gill Inspect, Gill Inspects, I should know that word, home inspection. There really are two fundamental parts to the home inspection process, the investigation and the education. Usually, all of the emphasis is on the investigation, what the inspector does in the house. But it's my experience over 25 years that a successful, positive experience by a client depends a lot on the investigation, but mostly on the education. Being able to relay the condition of the house in a written inspection report and to help prioritize those findings because sometimes they are pretty voluminous you know sometimes we need to really say this is back burner and this is front burner this is important this isn't that's all part of the education that's all part of the home inspection report in Indiana and most of the country, the home inspector is charged with two basic pillars of duty. One is to find and disclose those things that are major components that are significantly deficient. Fancy way of saying broke, I think. And those things that are at or in, at, <laughs> near or at the end of their expected service life. That's pretty subjective. There's lots of published data that helps us with it. But uh, when it comes down to the education part of home inspection, what we're conveying to you, what we're telling to you, it is pretty subjective, and that's important for us to know today. The home inspection that you receive from me is in six parts. It has a cover, an inspection agreement. It has about a 10 page body of details. It's where we record all the data, all the required elements of the home inspection go in those 10 pages. Then it has a comment summary, things that my skilled eye and my experience tell me that you should know, but are not actionable repairs. And there is a repair recommendation summary, which is really what we're doing at the home inspection. It's what you're going to use in your response. That's the heart of the document. And the sixth element is the photo exhibit, where we include some pictures of the house to help you see the house through our eyes. We can go through those six elements quickly, but in a way that illustrates how you can best understand what the information is conveying, the education, and how you can best use the home inspection report for your purpose of buying or selling a home. The cover sheet is simple enough. It has a little title information, the address for the house, a picture of the house, and some contact information. The inspection authorization and agreement has several parts. Amongst the first, are the uh, legal information citing the statute that controls home inspections in Indiana. In the purple, some inclusions and exclusions and limitations of the inspection that are an important part of the document. And in the orange, some things are important to you that this is your inspection, not mine. I don't reuse it, republish it. It's a confidential document and signature box. Now we're looking at an example, two pages out of ten, that are the details of the home inspection, where the detailed information, what we have found in the home inspection, is recorded. Each page is laid out the same, with information down the center, and a column on the left-hand side that tells us where we need to go in the document to learn more. In this case, if it says NC, that's no comment. And that line item is inspecting just like we expect it to and we're not sending you anywhere else. Here we see the electrical page. We come down that left hand column and we see on line 132 
see other summary. We see on line 142, repair recommended. On line 143, minor repair. Line 132, see other summary, is sending us back to a summary in the back of the report that is comments that are not repair comments, they're information that I feel like you need to know, material to the house, but not worthy of being in the repair recommendations. On the other hand, when we get down to line 142, we see a repair is recommended. We go to a repair recommendation summary in the back of the report, find line 142, and it will tell us what we need to know. Likewise, 143 minor repair is in the same repair recommendation summary. Find line 143, and you're going to find three bits of information. What's wrong, why it matters, and a recommendation for repair. Now we'll cross-reference the electrical detail page with the comments other than repairs. We'll find one at line 132 where it tells us that there is a comment. We find line 132 on the comments summary and it tells us that the electric panel in the upstairs closet is a sub-panel to the main panel. That's important information. It doesn't fit in the detailed body of the report so we put it in the comments, something that you should know. Now let's match up the electrical detailed page and find line number 142 to the repair recommendation page and find line 142. So when you are looking through the details and you find that line 142 we say we are recommending a repair, we go to the repair recommendation summary, find line 142 and it's going to tell us that a ground fault device failed to open when faulted. So that needs repaired. It's also bold and underlined, which means it has some safety implication or it's a major item. In this case, it's a safety implication. The repair is quite simple, probably. An electrician service call. Most clients probably read the summary first. In that case, we might look at the summary, find item number 12 which talks about the fireplace damper and see that the fireplace damper assembly needs repair. If we want to go back to the report and find that in the details we go into the report and find line 168. This is how the report is tied together. The summary of repair recommendations is the heart of the home inspection. It's where you're going to spend your time discussing with your realtor. You're going to take these line items from the, the summary and put them in your response to the inspection in the event that you're asking for repairs. This is a summary that brings all of the repair recommendations together. There's also a tool to help you prioritize what may need to be repaired. We use bold type and underline to indicate things that are important because they are major or contributing to another problem or they are, have some safety implication. You'll notice there are several things that are not underlined in bold. These are items that we think should be repaired, but they're not as important. They're not as high up the priority. Certainly as a homeowner, you're going to be making repairs, not just asking the seller to make repairs. This is a way to help you figure out in the context of purchasing a home what needs to be dealt with right now and what needs to be dealt with by which party. Many home inspections don't even include a summary. It makes it much more difficult to prioritize. A gun inspects, home inspection always does. When the two summary sections of the home inspection look like this, four pages, multiple lines in the comment section, several lines, in the repair recommendation section, 15 line items, does that mean you have a bad house? No. There's a lot of information in this report. This, these summaries are garnered from 10 pages of detailed information. And the required elements of a home inspection include several hundred items to inspect. If the home inspector is doing his or her job. They're going to inspect all of the items that are required. And they're going to report to you when there's a deviation, when the condition we find 
is a major component significantly deficient or when there's a component at or near the end of its service life. We're also going to talk to you about the things that impact the home. Sometimes they're maintenance issues, sometimes they're cost issues. They often go in the other comments section. Many very fine homes have four or five pages of summary. Certainly the volume of pages is no reason to panic. So your home inspection comes in six sections. Some of it are pictures, some of it are detailed information, and then most importantly there's a repair recommendation summary towards the back of the report. That is the summary that references back to the details by line and gives you some prioritization about what you should be considering repairing. It also makes it very easy to respond back in your response to the inspection. In the event that you're asking for repairs, you can simply copy these line items into your response. Then you have the home inspector's language in your response to the inspection. That is one of the most difficult things for a home inspection home inspector to master over the years of writing reports. That is writing a summary item that indicates the right level of concern, talks about the repair in such a way that it's understandable to a novice, to a home buyer, and also describes it in such a way that it can be understood by a uh, technician, by somebody fixing the repair, and by a realtor involved in the transaction. In this summary, each item should have three parts. It should tell you what's defective, why it matters to you, and a, a way to fix the problem. Now there's an exception to that. If, if the reason it's obvious, the reason it's, it's meaningful to you is obvious, we may not say it, we may omit it, so it would be two parts, but uh, that, is, that is the format, and that's re what's required by state law for home inspection. So what's wrong, why it matters, what to do about it in each one of those line items so you can purchase your home with confidence. We also include photos in the home inspection. There's a photo on the cover, and then there are an additional eight photos in, at the very end of the report. These photographs are representative of what we're finding in the inspection. They are not an attempt to, to catalog every uh, defective item. They're simply representative, but they are very helpful in understanding the house. If you come to the home inspection presentation when we're about done with our work inspecting the home, we're going to go through all the pictures we take with you on the laptop, let you see the home through our eyes and explain to you why these things impact the home and why we think they are worthy of understanding.